If science can be learned from the Simpsons, toilets flush counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This is something called the Coriolis effect, where the Earth's rotational force influences movement of matter. Thanks, Bart. So the next obvious step, take a toilet to the equator and search for the straight flush. Well, Bart, eat my shorts. The straight flush doesn't exist. Mostly because toilet jets all point in the counterclockwise direction. But the logic of the straight flush is correct. The Coriolis effect is the appearance of a force because of the rotation of the Earth. Take one of those carousel thingies on tables in Chinese restaurants. If you put a rolling ball on it and spin, it will roll straight across the surface, despite the turning of the table. Now, imagine yourself spinning with the carousel and following the path of the ball. It will appear to curl. This is the Coriolis effect. Toilets don't have enough water in them to be influenced by the rotational force, and they aren't a perfect system, so small asymmetries can affect the spin. At least, that is what all the science says. But the Coriolis effect does influence water rotation during draining. So in theory, the straight flush is possible, just not in a tiny toilet. But I know you don't believe me, so the next time you're at the equator, give it a go and flush away. There are also planetary or global winds, which move on a global scale in response to large-scale variations in temperature. Global winds are driven by the circulation of air in atmospheric units called cells. The northern and southern hemispheres each have three mirrored cells based on latitude. The sun warms these cells differently. Air nearer to the equator receives more continuous, direct heat than air near the north and south poles. This keeps the tropical air warm and light, whereas polar air is cooler and heavier. The polar air continually moves toward the equator from the north and the south, pushing the lighter and warmer air upward. This air does not move in a direct line from the poles to the equator, though, because of Earth's rotation. As Earth rotates, it changes the direction of the global winds passing over it, causing them to curve. This is called the Coriolis effect. In the northern hemisphere, wind curves to the right in the direction of motion. In the southern hemisphere, it curves to the left. Whereas differences in air pressure create wind, 
factors such as the Coriolis effect shape how it moves. Hello everyone. So this today, this lab, the balloon represents the earth and this line around the balloon, it goes all the way around, represents the equator. At the top of the balloon, there is a small arrow pointing from west to east. On the top, this represents the North Pole. Remember, we talked recently about um, there being two polar regions. We have the North Pole and the South Pole. So the North Pole is the one that is above us, and the South Pole is at the bottom of the Earth where Antarctica is. So this marker right here represents air traveling from the North Pole to the equator. The balloon is being turned counterclockwise. That is the opposite way of the clocks in our um, classrooms. You see that doesn't go in a straight line. Okay, and the next one, this line still represents the equator, but this time the marker is going to be, is going to start down at the bottom where the South Pole is. Let's watch that one more time. And this is the air moving from the South Pole to the equator. And this picture right here represents the way that air travels across the globe from the North Pole to the equator and from the South Pole to the equator.